Could you stop looking over my shoulder? There is nothing more infuriating first thing in the morning than having someone trying to read what you're reading. Oh, I know, Sarah, dear. If you know, why do you do it? Well, just showing an interest. Well, how about showing an interest in your newspaper instead? Yes, dear, of course, dear. that, Sarah. <laughs> what? Those potatoes in garlic mayonnaise. You don't want your guests going home reeking of garlic, do you? Mother, will you mind your own business? Sorry, dear. I'd be as quiet as a mouse. <coughs> I don't see why you're making such a fuss about this dinner party. Mother! It's not as though you haven't given dinner parties before. Well, I haven't given that many since Henry died. It's different entertaining on your own. Don't worry, dear. I'll help you. What? No, I don't think that's really a very good idea. But, Sarah, don't be silly. If I'm going to be at this dinner party, I might just as well help you prepare it. Ah. What do you mean, ah? I mean, Mother, that I haven't actually thought you would be at this dinner party. I'm sorry, dear. I, I'm getting rather deaf. My hearing is not as good as <laughs> What I am saying, Mother, is that you are not invited to this dinner party next Friday. Oh. But I'm sorry, it's just, I don't know Clifford and Gwen Davis all that well, and I just think I'd cope better if you weren't there. I see. Are you afraid I'll let down your image? Yes. <laughs> but please understand, it's nothing personal. Oh, no, of course not, nothing personal. I'm only your mother, after all, so one really wouldn't expect there to be anything personal, would one? Mother! No, don't worry about me, dear. I'm sure I can find something to entertain myself on Friday evening. There's always the television, after all. A lot of elderly people find the television a great comfort <laughs> when their families turn against them. <laughs> I don't know, Russell. I think one of the most worrying things a mother can say is, don't worry about me. You immediately start thinking of all the reasons why you should be worrying about her. Which is precisely what you're supposed to do. I know. Pathetic, isn't it, how easily I play into her hands? And you're getting all this, the, the full Greek tragedy, just because you haven't asked Eleanor for your dinner party? Yes. Makes me feel guilty for being on the magic list of people who are invited. But don't worry, you're going to earn every last after-dinner mint. Oh. These Clifford and Gwen people are a bit daunting, are they? Well, quite honestly, I can't remember them that well. He works in hospital administration, and they invited us to dinner just before Henry died. I've been plucking up courage ever since to arrange the return fixture. <laughs> Make them sound really exciting. Well, Gwen's all right, as I recall, when she can get a word in. Clifford can be a bit overpowering, though. Very Welsh and rather forthright in his opinions. Sounds as though Eleanor may have got the best deal after all. Oh, yes, there was one thing I wanted to ask you, Sarah. Mm. Am I gay? What? <laughs> Am I gay? Russell, I thought that was one of the great discoveries of your life. No, I meant for the purposes of this dinner party. Am I meant to be gay or am I there masquerading as your latest love interest? Ah! <laughs> well, since you didn't invite Bob, it's a reasonable assumption to make. No, no, I had no intent. Oh dear, I should have invited Bob, shouldn't I? Oh, he'll be all right. He could take your mother out on Friday. They'd have a lovely time. Sit there all evening and bitch about you. Terribly sorry, Russell. I just wasn't thinking. Look, you and Bob must come round together on some more, 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 more suitable occasion. Am I to gather that one of Clifford's forthright opinions is a disapproval of gays? No, no. It's just that he and Gwen are terribly boring, and when you and Bob come over, I'd like it to be a really fun evening. But you don't mind me on my own being bored to tears? No, no. I mean, well, yes. Well, what, what I. What I Oh, I don't know. I can't see anything right these days. Sarah, I'm sending you out. Are you? Of course. Oh, I wish I'd never even contemplated this dinner party. Every arrangement I make for it seems to upset someone. I'm not upset. Really? Oh, what about your daughter, though? Have you managed to upset Claire yet? No, no, I haven't. No, I think I can confidently say that so long as she isn't expected to come to it, there is nothing about this dinner party that is going to upset Claire. Mummy, I think it's really inconsiderate you setting up a dinner party for next Friday. I told you weeks and weeks ago that I was going to have a party then. But Clarence... Didn't I? Yes, yes, you did. 
I'm sorry, Claire, but you told me so many weeks and weeks ago that it completely slipped my mind. And then when Clifford and Gwen said they could were free for next Friday, I just sort of went for it. Well, if you can't organise your own social diary, that's hardly my fault, is it? Nope. Nope. Fair enough. Fine. Another nice, neat idea goes out of the window. What nice, neat idea? Well, I was just thinking how wonderfully convenient it would have been if you'd been free on that evening to take your grandmother out to the cinema. They've got Rambo on again, and she always enjoys that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't be free, will I? <coughs> no. You've actually invited everyone. I haven't invited anyone. Oh, well, look, could perhaps you could change the date? I haven't invited anyone, but they're all coming. <laughs> Claire, I'm sorry if I sound obtuse, but if you haven't invited anyone, what makes you think that anybody's actually going to turn up? Well, me actually inviting people to parties is terribly middle-aged. I always invite people. Exactly. Proves my point. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't invite them, what makes them come? Telepathy? No, you just let them know that the party's likely to happen. But you don't invite them? No. Ah. Anyway, listen, I can't change it now. It's all set up. You mean everybody's been told it's likely to happen? Exactly. Katie and Look, I Denise know you disapprove. No, 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 I didn't say a word. It's just not my scene, that's all. <laughs> Certainly won't be. And if you let any of my friends so much as catch a glimpse of you that evening, I'll murder you. Ah. <laughs> You're afraid I'll let down your image? Yes. <laughs> Oh, look, Claire, I'm sorry there's been a clash of dates for our parties, but since it's happened, there is... I must just say a word about music. Oh, that's a thought. Mummy, could you keep the volume down? My friends won't want Vivaldi pumping up through the floorboards all evening. Well, that's what I was going to say to you, Claire. My friends won't want the top 20 I pumping up. I don't want that sort of party. Oh, sorry. All I wanted to... Oh, evening, Mother. So, this is where you're hiding. Not hiding. Hello, Claire. Evening, Granny. How are you this evening, Mother? How sweet of you to take an interest, Sarah. <laughs> I'm fine, fine. Don't you worry about me, dear. Mother. Oh, sorry, dear, what did you say? As you know, I'm getting rather deaf. <laughs> you know, Sarah, I've been thinking a lot today. And I've decided it might be simpler all round if I were to move into the sycamores with Vera Poling. So much less trouble for everyone if I lived in a home. Mother, you do live in a home. Oh, no. No, I wouldn't say that. I live in a house. I live in a small flat in the basement of a large house where, by coincidence, my daughter lives. <clears throat> and your granddaughter? Yes, my granddaughter, who I must say is a source of great comfort. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, Sarah, I mustn't keep you. I'm sure you've got lots to do. Just wanted to see that you were all right. As you see, 100% fit and healthy. Oh, what a nice feeling that must be. <laughs> Mother, are you going out? Oh, yes. Yeah. Where to? Oh, thoughtful of you to take an interest. But, well, I'm not sure, dear. I, I might go into the park. I expect I could find an empty bench to sit on for a while. <laughs> Mother, it is pitch dark Or outside. if it rains, I dare say I could find a nice... Cozy bus shelter. Mother! Don't you worry about me, dear. I'll be all right. <laughs> corkscrew? Corkscrew? Corkscrew, yes. Oh, no, corkscrew. You haven't got one? Well, yes, I have, but it's complicated. You see, Yesterday evening, I went down to Mother's flat, you know, spent some time with her dutiful daughter, Bitch, so I cared. And... Even though you didn't invite her to your dinner party. Exactly, and I took a bottle of wine to cheer her up. And you took the corkscrew, too. Yes. Well, look, in your dining room, there are six bottles of wine and no corkscrew. Many people would regard that as an emergency. Yes, but I, I don't want to go down to Mother and... Oh, I'll go up and see if Claire's got one. Bless you, Russell. Good evening, dear. Oh. <laughs> You've been jump creeping up like that. I don't creep, Sarah. I just don't make gratuitous noise when I'm here. <laughs> you know, I think perhaps it's just as well I'm not coming to this dinner party of yours this evening. I'm glad you see it that way. If you really are going to serve all that garlic, I should think by the end of the evening your breath could kill at a hundred metres. <laughs> Mother, I have got quite a lot to do, so if Oh, you I didn't mind. come up here just to get under your feet, Sarah. I thought you might want this. Oh, thank you. 
since I presume you're giving your guests wine as well as smoked salmon, fillet steak, peaches in brandy. Well, I must be getting back to my little boiled egg. <laughs> having a boiled egg, Mother. No, of course not, dear. Oh, good. No, I'll probably go mad and spoil myself with a bit of brown bread and butter, too. <laughs> I hope you have a good evening, dear. Thank you. What are you going to do, Mother? With my evening. Oh, don't worry about me, dear. I'll watch television. Oh, something good on? I believe it was a European soccer semi-final. <laughs> but you hate football. Oh, I know, dear. But needs must when the devil drives. so long to fix the return match. A match? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Do come through. Gwen, this is Russell Bryant, Gwen Davis and Clifford Davis. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Do sit down. <laughs> uh, look, I, I, I just got to check something in the kitchen, so Russell will get you a drink. Yes, of course. Well, what will you have, Sarah? Uh, white wine, please. Won't be a sec. Uh, anything I can do to help, Sarah? No, no, it's fine, Gwen. Now, uh, what can I get you? Wine, gin, whiskey, sherry, Campari. Campari? Oh, la, la. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Campari. Always sounds like a pufter's drink to me. <laughs> <laughs> and you should see some of the people that drink it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Am I to gather that you don't want a Campari, Clifford? Campari? Me? Oh, no, no, no. I like the hard stuff. I'm a Scotchman. Always have been. <laughs> I thought you were Welsh. <laughs> well, what can I get you? Oh, something soft, please. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Ice or water, Clifford? No, I take it straight. Yes, well, you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Gwen. Thank you. Clifford? Oh, uh, thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Bottoms up. What? <laughs> Russell, I've never seen you drinking Campari before. No. Sometimes I just feel the need. <laughs> oh. <coughs> well, this is jolly, isn't it? <laughs> Clifford, have you found out where Russell fits into the scheme of things? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Hi, Katie, it's me. Listen, I've just heard from Sue. Apparently, Craig isn't going out with Denise anymore. Well, because she said he ought to change his socks more often, and he refused. <laughs> so, Denise is coming with Dave, but not his boy and girlfriend, so uh, she won't mind if you get off with him later, OK? But she did ask if you put in a good word with Sam. Well, she fancies him rotten. She was afraid he'd got the wrong impression of the sort of girl she was when she went into that wet T-shirt competition. <laughs> well, it was for charity. Comic relief, yeah. <laughs> now, don't be bitchy. I'll see you soon. Oh, and listen, could you bring your wet, wet, wet tapes and some paper plates? Thanks. Bye. You see, the trouble with the so-called caring professions in this country today is that they just don't care. As a hospital administrator, I see it every day, don't I, Gwen? Yes, Clifford. Some more of that scotch, is there? Yes. Well, don't hang about. Give us a refill. <laughs> <laughs> I blame the doctors, don't I, Gwen? Yes, Clifford. Now, you take the elderly. I mean, the hospital wards are cluttered with elderly people who just shouldn't be there. Oh, thank you. Well, where do you think they should be, then, these elderly people? They should be cared for in the family. Uh, should be included in all the family activities. Uh, don't you agree, sir? Well, yes, <laughs> to an extent. Do Gwen's and your parents live with you? 
No, both my parents are dead, and Gwen's are utterly repellent, aren't they, Gwen? <laughs> so, obviously, in our case, uh, it wouldn't work, uh, but the principle is right. I mean, can you imagine the alienation an elderly person must feel being left out on their own when they know that the younger generation are having such a good time? <laughs> yes. Uh, your parents are still about, are they, sir? My mother is, yes. Oh. Live near, does she? Pretty near. Yeah. Good, good, good. Anna, I'm sure she's included in all the family activities. Hmm? <laughs> well, um, well, uh, shall we go through to dinner? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. I really am trying, but I do find him utterly repulsive. I know. I've forgotten quite how awful he was. He's such a bigot. I mean, the way he went on right through dinner, blasting away at every minority, religious, racial, sexual. Why on earth did you invite them? Well, I suppose to prove to myself that I could cope, that I'm strong enough now even to deal with impossible people like Clifford. Entertaining shouldn't be a test of strength, Sarah. <laughs> you shouldn't use guests as chest expanders. Sorry. <laughs> Particularly for having involved you. Will you be able to survive through coffee? I really don't know. If Clifford makes another of his cracks about gays, I just might find myself knocking his teeth through the back of his neck. Oh, dear. Oh, sorry. It's just that he talks so much, apart from anything else. If only we had someone else here who'd talk more than he does. <laughs> yes. Russell, I've had an idea. What? <laughs> Would you mind just popping down to Mother's flat and asking if she'd like to join us for coffee? <laughs> I see these poor old dears on the wards, utterly bewildered. Uh, it's not surprising that the suicide rate amongst the elderly is mounting, is it, Gwen? No, Clifford. Oh. I hope you won't mind if my mother comes to join us for coffee. As I say, she, she lives nearby, and I, I did ask if she might like to drop in later. No, 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 we'd be delighted, wouldn't we, Gwen? Yes, Clifford. That's how old people should be treated. Made to feel part of things. I bet your mother really appreciates the care that you take of her, Sarah. Well, um, sort of. You see, I come across these dreadful cases of elderly people wandering the streets because they haven't got anywhere to go where anyone cares for them. <laughs> um, Sarah, could I just have a word? What, out there? Yes. Would you excuse me for a moment? Russell seems to have um, some sort of problem. You can say that again. Can I visit? She's not there. Mother? Yes, she's not in her flat. What? The door's ajar, the television's on, and there's no sign of her. Oh, my God. You can take my word for it. I know what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, of course. Where's that uh, fancy friend of yours, Russell, gone to now? Oh, he's just um, nipped out to do something for me. You still expecting your mother to drop in? Ah, well... Who can say? She's a very independent lady. Oh, good. Good, good, good. That's what we like to hear about uh, old people, Mr. Well. Yes, Clifford. <laughs> no worries about your mother out wandering the streets, eh, Sarah? No. No. Hello? It's Russell. I've looked in the park and all the local pubs. There's no sign. Oh, dear. Do you want me to come back, or shall I try anywhere else? Well, um... Would you mind just checking the bus shelters? <laughs> the bus shelters? Yes, please. Thank you. Why? Uh, sorry about that. Um, just uh, someone about um, about something. Uh, wanted to ring me about it. Um, about something. Uh, more whiskey, Clifford. Do help us. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Converted the top floor into a flat, have you? Uh, yes, some time ago. Uh, young people? Sorry? In the flat? Well, a young person. Dreadful actually. noise they're making with all that music. Very antisocial. Well, it's... I blame the parents. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, look, perhaps I should explain. Oh, no, 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 this is too bloody much. I think you should go up and have a word with them. Well, I really don't think I could. Oh, I understand. You don't think it's a woman's place to complain? Yes, exactly. I agree. Oh, good. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sort them out. Making all that noise, it's a younger generation, no respect at all. Selfish, they are. No. It's not.
alive? Uh, hard to say. <clears throat> Hungover. I have the same problem. I had to spend a long time massaging Russell's bruised ego with brandy after everyone else had gone. Coffee? Mm, please. But your party went all right, hmm? Uh, so far as I can remember, yes. Was yours successful? I don't think that's the word I'd choose, Claire. <laughs> well, last night doesn't really go down in the annals of the great successful evenings of history. In fact, I think people probably had more fun at the Macbeth's banquet. It wasn't just the company, there were external factors. In fact, I have a bone to pick with you about the external factors. Please, my bones are too fragile to face picking at the moment. No, Claire, I must say it, it was about the music. You promised me that you'd keep the volume down. It wasn't me who kept turning it up. Oh, Claire, it was your party. You should... Good morning, good morning. <laughs> just off to the shops. Anything I can get for either of you? Morning, Mother. No, I don't think so. Thank you so much for the party last night, Claire. It was very sweet of you to include me. Wasn't it a charming thought, Sarah? Mm, charming. It was nice seeing your friend with the hairstyle and the earring again. He was most entertaining. Gary? Yes. He was learned to keep his hands to himself, though. He got a bit fresh later on. <coughs> <laughs> so much oh, it didn't matter. Well, I do think you might have told me that Claire had invited you to her party. Oh, I didn't want to bother you with boring details about me, Sarah. Besides, Claire didn't invite me to the party. She just let me know it was likely to happen. I'm surprised you could hear yourself think with all the noise that was going on there. Ah, uh, well, you have to remember that I'm getting a little deaf. That's why I have to keep turning up the music. <laughs> you were doing it. Of course, and you were doing it on purpose, weren't you, Mother? Sorry, dear, I didn't catch that. As I say, I'm getting rather deaf. Never mind. <laughs> well... I must be off. Things to do, things to do. I'll see you later, dear, when you're feeling better. Yes, Mother. My God, Claire, she's got a bloody nerve. Sarah! Yes, Mother? There's no need to swear. <laughs> <laughs>